being an energy radiator, um, there was a bit of a typo in this. Uh, I didn't realise until Monday. Uh, I think it was um, building an energy radiator. It's actually about being an energy radiator uh, and trying to help other people be energy radiators uh, as well. Um, so yeah, good, we're nearly up to 30, great. Okay, so we've got some numbers in there. So without further ado, let's get started uh, about being an energy uh, um, uh, radiator. Let's make sure that the uh, yep, connection's okay. Good stuff. Okay, so today's session, being an energy radiator, let's get stuck into it. So uh, we've got to look at four different types of people that we get in an organization. Now, one or two of people on this call would have probably seen uh, me do this before. Uh, I haven't done it in any of these sessions that we've been doing over the last kind of 10, 12 weeks. Uh, it's been something specifically that I use, I use it with team dynamics uh, 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 and um, the different types of attitude that people have. So where I've mentioned personality profiling a few times before, um, this model that I'm going to share with you now um, doesn't have anything to do with personality type. Um, this is attitudinal type choices. So we've got a bit of a, a four box model. Uh, some of the language I'm going to use will be quite emotive uh, for this exercise, uh, but you'll be able to link this very, very quickly to uh, the type of people that um, give you energy uh, and the type of moods that you can be in that will give you lots of energy uh, and the type of people that drain our energy uh, and the type of moods that drain your energy um, on the back of this. Um, and as we go through this model, um, you know, don't um, anybody be writing anybody's name or anything like that in the chat box, but you will be thinking of people as we go through it. So before we can get to what an, a radiator is, an energy radiator, and also an dr energy drain, let's have a look at these four different types of people uh, and get a bit of context around them. Uh, and we'll look at this from your point of view personally, and also if you're obviously around other people uh, like that as well. So, four types of people. So what we've got here, uh, and I apologise, these, these white lines might be quite weak uh, on here. Um, I'll, uh, I'll take you through what this says. Um, that should have come out blue, and it hasn't, so bear with me a second. Um, so what we've got um, is, I've got a, the slide afterwards, you'll be able to see in more detail, but basically you've got a four box model here, four box model. And on this side of the model, you've got people that are bought in, Okay, so in other words, positive mental attitude. Now, from other sessions that I've run and work that I've done within Centrica, um, attitude is a choice. We choose our attitude. It is based on our belief set and it is based on, and that is based on our conditioning. But nevertheless, attitude is a choice. So the people in this column, these two columns here, uh, these two squares, they have a positive attitude. In other words, they're choosing to be solution focused rather than problem focused and they're choosing uh, to put a smile on rather than a frown if that makes sense, okay? And then of course on the other side of this model we have the opposite. We have the opposite of that. So you've got people that aren't bought in uh, and choosing to have a poor attitude. Um, now across the top here, okay, don't worry so much if you can't see the words over here. In fact, let me just try and change the background. Just bear with me a second on that one. People that are bought in, people that are not bought in along here, okay? And then across here, we have people with high levels of self-belief along this axis here, and people with low levels of self-belief and also motivation. So high levels of self-belief and motivation, low levels of self-belief and motivation. And we've got names for these four different types of attitudes or four different types of people uh, within an organization, okay? So we're gonna start on the good side of the force, as we always do, we're going to start with the good stuff. So we're going to start with this box here, okay? So, these people are bought in, good attitude, highly confident and have self-belief, and also highly motivated, okay? Good attitude, highly confident, highly motivated. We call these people the organisational players, okay? So these are like the players on the football pitch. These are the people that um, get score you the goals, okay? Uh, they're not yes men and women, so they don't just nod aimlessly. They will challenge things if they're not happy about stuff, but they'll challenge things in the right way, in the right context, and they'll always have that solution-focused mindset going forward, okay? So this is what a player is. Um, you'll know who they are, 
you who you work with them uh, you might be one of them uh, but these are the people kind of uh, cup half full um, confident in in what they're doing uh, motivated self-motivated in the workplace uh, and come in and try and aim for best every day uh, they might not always get best or peak performance but they'll at least aim for it every day okay so we don't really need to talk that those are those people are your energy radiators okay and we're going to come on specifically and talk about those energy radiators as we go through the session today but these people are definitely your energy radiators if you work around these people you feel enthused you feel motivated you feel buzzed it's certainly the box that I try and sit in a lot uh, in the workplace and it's easy for me to sit in this box when I'm doing this sort of thing for you I have to remind myself to sit in this box when I'm in the office chasing leads doing this doing that uh, updating admin doing the account and so on and so on and so on okay so this is about being an all-rounder and trying to aim for best uh, every day okay I'm pretty sure that you know uh, people that like that or you or you're one of them which is even better eh? organizational players okay now what we're gonna do is drop down to this box here okay and what we've got in this box here is still people that are bought in so good attitude, okay, so they mean well, but this time, maybe less confidence and a little bit less motivation uh, that, uh, that, that these people get. But they're still good people, and actually what they need is maybe a bit of help and support, uh, personally, with their self-talk and stuff like that, but also, as a leader, maybe a little bit of help and support uh, from a leadership point of view to help them with their confidence and so on and so on. We call these people the organisational spectators. Okay, so um, a spectator, they, they want to be a player, okay, um, they want to be a radiator, but don't always quite, ca kind of get there sometimes. It could be a lack of motivation, but you'll also find it might be a lack of confidence. Uh, and to be fair, confidence and motivation go hand in hand, so when motivation drops, uh, sorry, when confidence drops a little bit, sometimes motivation drops with it. So you, your first point of call really with these people is, is to try and help with confidence. Um, because they, they are a radiator sometimes, but they don't aim for it all the time, so they don't quite get there all the time. Whereas your players, they're at it 95% of the time uh, and getting it. However, um, if you've got these two people in your team, you're doing okay. Uh, because these are the people that are going to start radiating that energy within the team. And other people bringing other people up when energy is low. Um, so uh, the only caveat with spectators is they might need a little bit more support, a little bit more time, a little bit more help, and so on and so on to grow their confidence, which in turn will grow their motiv uh, motivation. So that, that in essence, they are your radiators, your players being your main radi radiators, your spectator really wanting to get there might need some help and support. So that's the good side of the force, that's where we, where the type of people that radiate, and I'll give you a bit more information around these in a moment on the next slide, but before we move on we need to look at the drains, if you like, okay? So what we've got here, are, and this axis, are people that are not bought in, so bad attitude, okay? Choosing to have a bad attitude, okay? Um, and you'll notice these people quicker, by the way, because you'll know who they are straight away. Um, but we've got two types. So before we come up and deal with this top right-hand corner here, we're going to come down here and deal with this corner. So what we've got in this one is somebody that's not bought in, low confidence and low motivation. So not bought in, in other words, not bothered, okay? Low motivation, so not bothered again, and probably not very confident because of all the other things. Okay, now we call these people organizational corpses. Now, if you haven't heard me do this session before, you might be smiling right now because it normally gets a laugh, corpse. Okay, but that's what these people are. Oh, they kind of, you know, haunt your corridors. Uh, these are the people that retired years ago and didn't tell anybody. Okay, so, um, you know, that normally gets a laugh as well. Maybe you know one or two of these corpses. And what a corpse is, is it's somebody that's just disengaged, not bothered, no motivation, um, low confidence as well, uh, because of all of that. Um, however, from an infectious point of view, 
they're not that infectious to other people. So they are pretty miserable, but they'll generally be miserable on their own. They don't spend time actually making other people miserable because they're not even that bothered, okay? So it's somebody that's majorly dis disinfected, disinfected, it's not the right word, isn't it? Defected, not bothered, uh, you know, uh, disenfranchised, I think is the word. Somebody that's literally not bothered. Now, if you know somebody like that or they're in your team, uh, there's a bit of an issue with this because once people fall into this box, productivity will drop, it's as simple as that. Uh, they may do just enough to get by and then go home. Uh, and th they might not even do just enough to get by. Um, I once did this model uh, for a, um, a, a, a company and uh, it was like an open program. And while I was doing this, there was uh, two ladies in the corner of the room that were, that were laughing. Um, and uh, I said, is everything okay? And she said, yeah. She said, that's a great description, she said, that is. Uh, she said, my dad's a corpse. So I said, right, okay. Um, or, 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 I'm not sure how to take that. What do you mean? She said, well, you know, he works for rail track. He's got two miles of line. He goes out and checks for safety every day. So I, I, I got a bit confused at this point and went, okay. Um, I said, maybe you're getting mixed up. If your dad goes out and checks two miles of line for safety every day and he does a good job of it, then actually he's a player. Just because the job is repetitive and maybe boring doesn't mean you can't do it well. So you could still be a radiator and do it well and enjoy what you do, even if it's a repetitive task. Uh, and the lady said, uh, she said, no, you don't, uh, you haven't got a clue. She said, um, uh, rail track closed that section of line over six months ago and HR haven't caught up with him yet. He's still getting paid. So he's going out every day and checking the line that's closed because of an admin error uh, and the fact that he was still getting paid. That is the best example of a corpse mentality I have ever come across in an organization. Okay, so we need to watch out for that. And I know you, everybody on this call today, uh, and you can be quite honest with me here and tell me in the chat box, you're probably thinking of other people right now. You're probably naming people that are miserable in your heads, yeah? Um, we can all be a bit of a corpse at times, okay? We can all have a bit of a corpse mentality. We can all have a little bit of a spectator mentality as well. What we want to do is make sure that we get up there and we start aiming for that best, that peak performance. We come in, get glass half full, solution focused, not problem focused, because that's where the energy starts to radiate and that's the key. Remember today is all about being an energy radiator. How do you radiate energy, not only for yourself, because it gives you, uh, it gives you, makes you feel better and gives you more uh, energy, to be able to go and be productive, but radiating that to other people as well. So, corpse, we don't want to be a corpse, um, but remember, um, they are a bit of a drain, but not much, of, not, not, not compared to the next set of people. So the last set that we've got here, um, are in this corner, uh, are people that are not bought in, so bad attitude, but this time, highly confident in their own ability, and highly motivated to their own end, okay? So they're highly motivated to their own target. Uh, uh, and when I say target, I don't mean business target. I mean they wanna, you know, whatever their own agenda is, okay? And these are the people we have to watch out for because these are, along with these people, these are your Monday morning grunters, okay? That's what I affectionately like to call them. You come in on a Monday and you go, morning! And they go, Ugh. That's generally the response you're going to get. Um, and, uh, and then the next question that you ask them, which is not a question you want an answer for, you're being polite, is how are you? And then they spend the next 10 minutes draining the life out of you, telling you how bad the world is, okay? And that drain, that's where the drain comes from. So, these people, not bought in, not bothered, highly motivated for their own ends, highly confident in their own ability. We call these people the organizational terrorists, okay? Now, some people might think that's a strong word in the current climate, terrorist, and I have been questioned about using it. 
Uh, I've had one, a company, one or two companies that wouldn't let me use it and we had to change it to Cynic. The reason why we use terrorist is because if you look at the definition of the word terrorist uh, in an English language, uh, it means uh, somebody or something tries to undermine what you're trying to do. Okay, uh, and that's what this is. It's an organizational terrorist. So they come in and spend 75% of their time doing just enough not to get into trouble because they're clever. And then they spend the next 25% of their time recruiting these two poor buggers, these two poor people, into their fold. Okay, so a terrorist will always try and recruit. In other words, what I mean by recruit is get people to have a moan with them, okay? Do me a favour, on this chat box now, no names allowed, on the chat box, how many people on this call today identify somebody they know in that box, in the terrorist box? Just put me a yes in the chat box. How many people can identify people being in this box? Somebody that's a whinger, bit of a moaner, bit of a drain, he kind of likes a bit annoying to speak with them, and so on and so on and so on. What have we got? Just drop a yes in the chat box. Because uh, we've got no yeses. There we go, indeed. <laughs> Mick's put me on a bad day. Mick, thank you for being so honest. I really, really appreciate that. Because do you know what, Mick? We can, we can fall into this, can't we, sometimes? Without even realising it. Do you know, look... I'm a player 90% of the time, but when I flip, I don't flip down here, I flip here. I do exactly the same as you, Mick, and sometimes I go, oh, John, that wasn't the right way to deal with that, or well, that was a bit of a wind you shouldn't have had in front of your team, and so on and so on and so on, yeah? Aaron's put, I fully admit, on a Monday morning, I'm a terrorist pre-11 o'clock. <laughs> It should be pretty 10 o'clock, Aaron. Uh, on a, I know it's a Tuesday we do our sessions, isn't it? Do you, maybe we move our, our sessions on to a Monday? Maybe it give you better thinking time. <laughs> 10.45 is coffee. I like it. We'll talk about what gives his energy in a moment, Aaron. Luke, thanks, guys. You know, a couple of really honest people there. We can flip, but look, there are people that do this for a living, and that's where the drain comes in. If you're, if you're working around this for a long time, it can drain. And I know it's a bit easier at the moment because a lot of people aren't in the office, still working at home. Whereas actually in an office, if you're in an office environment, for those on the call that are, and you've got this going on in the office, that's hard work that is to actually get your motivation up and so on because it's a drain. So we need to look at what gives us energy, what radiates the energy, and what drains that, what drains it from us as well, which is what we'll do uh, on the session today, okay? Um, here's a question for you. What happens, again in the chat box, if that's okay, uh, everybody, let's have a look, how we got, oh, we've got 30, nearly 30 people now, fantastic, great. Um, who have we got on there? Right, great, there's four more there, just to say hello. Okay, good. Um, right, in the chat box, um, what do you think in a company or a team happens to the players? What do you think the players do, the people that are happy, content, um, enthusiastic, uh, focused, positive. What happens to those players if you don't deal with terrorist and corpse behaviour? If, if these people are allowed to terrorise and drain people's energy, ultimately, what do you think the players do? Okay, so we've, Aaron's answered uh, they play for another team. Yeah, so one option is that they leave. Okay, because players, they want to work in a good environment. They come to work to, uh, to, to smile, have fun, and, and work hard, okay? So if you don't deal with the terrorists or the corpses here, the players either leave, and that could mean go to another team, it could leave the organization, or worse, so, so uh, Martin's put burnout, uh, they are covered, they're covering the slack. Yes, so they burn out, okay, and leave or they choose to leave before they get burnt out, um, or even worse, you might turn a player into a terrorist. If you can't beat them, join them at that point. 
yeah? Uh, they can get down, uh, they can get down and spiral to become a terrorist, as Mick's just said. Absolutely right. Uh, you know, and Stuart's b uh, uh, back that up. So look, you know, these arrows are on this slide before I knew you were going to answer, because I knew you, I know you know what happens to these players. If these people aren't looked after, these people, and these people are allowed to do whatever they want, so instead of having loads of radiators, you've got loads of drains, going on, then players either leave, get burnt out, or become terrorists. Now, it depends how strong your player is. If you've got like a 10-10 player, they'll probably leave, or get burnt out. If you've got like a 5-5 player, 5.1 player, they may flip over and turn into a terrorist at that point. So, what we need to do is make sure that Sometimes we can't control other people, and I know there are some leaders on today's course, so you will have some authority over this as well, that's great. But we need to look at what, 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 how can we be a radiator, how can we make sure we're on this side of the model, and not on this side of the model. Because when we're doing this, we're radiating and other people want to come around us. The reason we call it a radiator is because it gives out warmth, and if you're cold, you want to be around it. Yeah? The reason we call these drains is for obvious reasons. They drain the life out of people. Uh, and we don't want that. So let's just have a look at this model in a little bit more detail. But just before we do, don't forget... <coughs> don't forget that you... There's only two ways that we can deal with a terrorist, okay? There's only two ways that... Corpses, they need some help and support, okay? But remember, they're not massively infecting other people, but they're still miserable, which means productivity is going to be low. Uh, there's only really two ways to deal with a terrorist, and it's change them or change them, unfortunately. Um, you need to either find out what's wrong with this terrorist, what's causing this terrorist-like behaviour, and help them become a player, or at some point, if you don't deal with that information, they leave. And when I say leave, I don't mean leave the company. It might mean uh, leave the team or whatever it may be. The point is you don't want to keep that because it's draining the life out of everybody within the team. I know it sounds a bit harsh, change them or change them. I get that. Uh, and obviously there's certain rules you have to follow and so on. But your first point of call always is to try and find out um, because, well, let me ask you this question. If you've got any terrorists in a business, most people don't join a business like that. They don't come into a business on day one and go, Rob, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be miserable. I'm going to moan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure everybody else lives in my misery. They don't do this. So they normally start in a business as a player. Okay? They wouldn't start as a spectator, because if they were, they'd be, end up being a corpse, because you, you, you don't normally go diagonal on this model, okay? So, the terrorists within your business, the organisation terrorists, they probably started off being a player. And then something happened along the journey that broke what we call a psychological contract. These people need some help and support. These people, uh, you already know. Then we'll go over to this box. So a corpse is somebody that probably can't do what you need and won't do it anyway. Okay, they're low skilled because they can't be bothered to learn new stuff um, and they've got no compunction to do anything extra anyway. Um, these people have no belief and no desire whatsoever. Um, they're resigned, fearful, trapped, a little bit of a lost soul, haunting your corridors. Uh, they probably come to work because the pain of getting another job is too great and that's the only reason they're there. Um, they're quiet, um, they are apologetic. They do apologise to stuff, but it doesn't lead anywhere. Um, and the other word there is a bit boring uh, as well. Uh, and that's got nothing to do with the type of person they are. That's the energy they're putting into things. So it's a choice, this, remember. It's not about personalities. Uh, and then finally, we have terrorists, okay? So, can do stuff, but won't bother, okay? Can make a brilliant player, not, not bothered enough to be able to go and do that, okay? But they could make the choice. They have belief but their desire is low, okay? Very, very confident, uh, and they're not really bothered. Apart from their own agenda, then they're really bothered about that, okay? Um, they're bitter, they can be bitter, they can be angry, uh, they can be a bit of a bully as well to other people because they are quite confident in their own ability. Uh, they're normally technically very good as well, uh, terrorists. They've normally been in the business for a while, and they're normally technically very good, which is why some of their behaviour has been allowed to get away with in the past. You know, oh, well, you know, do you know what? They cause me so much grief, uh, but they're technically good at what they do. 
Um, I remember doing this um, this model in a uh, let's just say a very large aerospace business in the UK. Uh, based in Derby, there you go, give it away a little bit. And uh, I was talking to a very senior, the person that was in charge of all of the engineer, uh, engineers. Uh, and when I did this model, um, the guy said to me, um, he said, I, he said I've, got, uh, I've got one of these. He says, I, I've got a terrorist. He said, I spend 80% of my week mopping up the fallout from the way he does his job. So I, I went, really? He said, yeah. He said, he's an absolute nightmare. And I said, why, why haven't you dealt with it? Uh, and he said, well, we've tried to change him. And I said, okay. He said, so, you know, we, we probably just need to get rid of him. And I went, okay. What, but this is taking 80% of your week up. And he said, yeah, but he's, he's only one of four people in the world that can do that job. So there's the expertise thing that comes in. So my response was, okay, fine, I understand that, and you don't want to lose the expertise, uh, but I would put a succession plan in very, very quickly. Because imagine two things. First of all, imagine having 80% of your week back, and more, how much more productive you would be. More to the point, I said, this person in question, does he have, uh, is he responsible for any lower level engineers? And he said, yeah, 300 of them. He was responsible for 300 engineers and his boss put him in that box. Can you imagine what was happening to all those people uh, when you've got somebody in that box, okay? So this is another reason why you've got to kind of deal with this situation because your productivity won't be at peak as a team until this is sorted out. Um, they're very prickly. Uh, they're also very arrogant as well. Um, they're very, uh, they will tell you exactly what they can do. Uh, they won't have any compunction to do it all, uh, but they will tell you how great they are, okay? Uh, they, they could be quite loud. You can have silent terrorists as well, but you might slip them into the corpse box. They can be quite loud, and they'll, they'll also be very critical of other people. So, um, that just gives you a little bit more information. Uh, and some of you that have seen the first slide that I did, you won't have seen that slide. So I wanted to put that in because it gives you a bit of a definition for each of these types of attitude. Remember, it's a type of attitude, not a type of person or personality. This is a choice that people make, okay? If as a spectator you're not very confident, well, you can make a choice to learn more stuff and become more confident, okay? These people, this is about motivation, this is about looking after yourself, okay? So, um, again now, I know you'll all be thinking of people, uh, uh, and I'm glad one or two of you have been honest with me uh, and said that we can maybe move between these boxes and fall in this box. But in essence, for today's session, radiators, drains, okay? So let's have a look at that now. Let's go into that in a little bit more detail. So, who's who? A player? is an energy radiator and they do it by habit. Okay, so they come in every day and you'll often find that it's good to be around them um, and uh, they are radiators, okay? There they go, happy people, right? Then you have spectators. They are wannabe radiators. They're wannabe energy radiators, okay? So they're trying to work out how they can do that. They're trying to work out how to be a bit more confident and they might need a little bit of help with the motivation, okay? So those are your two good sets. Then we've got corpses, okay, and they are energy drains to themselves, basically, okay? Pretty miserable, uh, but they won't really infect other people because they're not even that bothered. So they, they, they are a bit of a drain. Uh, just the atmosphere, to be honest, is a bit of a drain, but they're not actively draining other people. And then finally, we have the terrorists. They proactively drain energy from other people. They do it on purpose. Okay? It probably makes them feel better if they can bring other people down, right? So, those are your four types of people. So, it's the top two types that give us energy, that can be energy radiators, and the bottom two types that drain our energy. Okay? So, let's have, let's have a look now. Being an energy radiator. Here's the description of an energy radiator. Okay? Radiators are infectious. Feelings and emotions, remember, are infectious. Okay? They naturally make people feel good about themselves. They radiate their energy and enthusiasm like rays from the sun. I know it's a bit cheesy, but the point is, they feel, you feel good when you're around these people. They are inquisitive 
and playful, but also focused, okay? So they'll have a good, you know, bit of a, a laugh and a joke, um, but they're also focused on making sure that they get the job done. Um, they have a cup half full mentality, okay? In other words, they're choosing to be positive, and for those that remember the tree model or the iceberg model, they're on the right-hand side, they're not model, and they're choosing their attitude to get best behavior, okay? Uh, Aaron, you just described me perfectly. <laughs> Love it, Aaron. I, I wouldn't think anything else, Aaron, of you at all. That's the description of an uh, energy radiator, okay? Just not before 11 o'clock on a Monday, obviously. Uh, but you can change that, Aaron, going forward, can't you? <laughs> okay. So, in other words, energy radiators, pardon the pun, are solution-focused rather than problem-focused mentalities, okay? Okay, let's have a look at this. How to ensure you are an energy radiator. Here's some little things uh, that we're gonna look at in the next 20 minutes, uh, and also uh, oh, we'll look at the drains as well. Martin's put, uh, the cup is always half full, uh, half liquid, half air. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I love it. Okay, do you know, somebody, um, somebody once said to me, it's not about half full. And I haven't, I haven't got a glass in here, but somebody once said to me, it's not about, is it half full? They, they, I went to a seminar and, and somebody, the, the guy at the front held the glass out that was obviously half full or half empty. Um, and he said, uh, he said, what do you think I'm going to say? And of course the audience said, um, well, no, you're half full, uh, uh, half full, half empty. And he said, no, he said, I'm not really bothered about half full and half empty. And the question he said is, how much does this weigh, do you think? So a glass half, half full of water. So there was a few guesses. He said, how much do you think this weighs? Like that, and a few guesses. And then he said, he said, okay. He said, yeah, you're probably not, 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 not far off that. And then he said, um, how much does this weigh if I'm still holding it in an hour? And of course the weight won't change, but the impact of the weight does change. And one of the points he was getting at was two points really. If you've got a problem and you hold on to it for a long, long period of time, it gets heavier, it gets heavier. So you need to deal with that problem and, and get it sorted, hence being solution focused, yeah? And the longer you hold on to a problem as well, is uh, the more difficult it's gonna be. So I'm holding my arm out now and it's already getting tired. It's just, I'm not even holding a glass at this point, yeah? But it feels heavier already. It's not heavier, is it? But it feels heavier. Uh, and also, uh, the point he was making is actually, uh, if you have other people around you to help support uh, it, um, the problem is then halved and it feels lighter, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, um, nice little ditty for you there, but at the end of the day, w w this is about always looking for the glass half full, or the dealing with, dealing with the problem in a solution-focused way, so you can get rid of it, and it doesn't feel so heavy going forward, and other people helping out. Because remember, one of the key points for today is feelings and emotions are infectious. Okay, so if you're in a bad mood or a good mood, and you're next to people working, they'll know. If you're in a good mood or a bad mood and, and people ring you all day, they'll know. Uh, if you're in a good mood and a bad mood and you're on Teams calls, people will know. <laughs> because it comes out in our expressions, it comes out in our behaviour as well. So, the first thing we're going to look at putting your own mask on first. For those that can remember this, you get in an aeroplane, woohoo, some of us are allowed to do that now, aren't we? We get in an aeroplane, oh, add me air cut today, by the way, first time since lockdown, happy days. These are all very, very important things to me, okay? Um, we, you get in an aeroplane, the cabin crew says if the cabin, uh, if the air, uh, if the cap, if the air cabin depressurizes, masks will fall down in front of you. If you're going to help somebody else, put your own mask on first. Okay? So when it says put your own mask on first, it doesn't mean coronavirus. It means if you're going to help somebody else, put your own mask on first. So if you want other people to be an energy radiator, you have to be an energy radiator first. So we're going to have a look at that. Okay? We have to look at your mental health. Again, triggers, self-talk, all that type of stuff. You know, we've been into self-talk quite a lot. And we, uh, that one's on, uh, self-talk is on the uh, YouTube page. If you missed it, go and watch it. Put some triggers in place. Your thinking generates your emotions. Your emotions generate your actions. Your actions generate your results. Okay? So your mental health's got to be right. Your physical health has got to be right. We're going to look at that in a moment. The people that you mix with you might be able to choose, you might not be able to choose. So we need to look at that. Um, and we're going to look at your energy bucket. Okay? Because you, cut, you haven't got a boundless amount of energy. Okay? It's a finite amount that you have on a daily basis. 
Um, so we'll have a look at that as well. So there is your energy bucket. You can see, uh, I did not draw this by the way, this is a drawing that I got, um, but it, it does exactly what it says on the tin. You have a tap that is dropping energy into your energy bucket. You also have several holes in your energy bucket. Those are the drains in your life, things that drain your energy and the key is to keep the level of your bucket up high as well as, as it's going out quickly to keep the tap on more than it's going out or at least consistently so your level doesn't drop at that point which is why we use the old uh, hole in a bucket scenario you have things that regularly give you energy like somebody turning your tap on and you have things that regularly take your energy away uh, on a daily basis so we're going to look at those things what gives you energy what takes your energy away because that's the energy that's what you're going to be able to radiate and believe me when you have more energy you feel better you have a more positive outlook on life and you have a more solution focused outlook than when you're tired knackered worn out depressed angry all this other stuff that's going on here as well okay so keep that picture in your mind of your energy bucket let's firstly have a look at the stuff that comes out of the tap that gives you energy okay okay so what gives you energy um, the first one is sleep Okay, that's the biggest, most single thing that can make sure you get your energy that you need during the day. Okay, enough sleep. And we all have slightly different sleep patterns as well. Sometimes when I'm running energy management courses, uh, some of you will have done this, I get people to map out their energy on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 for every hour of the day to see what their energy pattern does during the day because we all have slightly different energy patterns I know for instance my energy pattern at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon starts to drop off okay now that doesn't mean that I can't um, uh, have no energy at 3 o'clock uh, because <laughs> I'll come <laughs> I'll come on to that comment in a moment um, but if I if I've got a phone call or a session that I'm running at three o'clock and my energy normally drops off about then I need to make sure that I'm gonna do something at half past two that's gonna give me some more energy so I can get peak performance at three o'clock so energy we can change it we can move it um, so the, the comment there is sleep some people do that in work mainly the zombies um, yeah, mainly the corpses yes they're the people that sleep at work no what I mean is sleep at night time okay so work out whatever sleep you, you need uh, and also there's lots you can do to help you sleep a lot of people don't do it all they go is God, I'm, you know, I, I don't sleep particularly well. I've got a problem with my shoulder. Uh, the muscles get tight when I try to go to sleep and it stops me from sleeping sometimes. Um, but, you know, I've got doctor's help. I've got meditation help. I've got, um, you know, make sure I drink chamomile tea before I go to bed. And, you know, don't watch an action movie. And there's lots you can do. You can actually even learn about sleep cycles and how they work and what time you should go to bed and then what time the sleep cycle ends so you can wait wake up, refresh rather than wake up halfway through a sleep cycle with a massive alarm going off. So there's lots that we can do with sleep, but it is the biggest single thing we can do to try and help us have more energy during the day is make sure we're sleeping effectively. How long you sleep is up to your own body clock. Some people need four hours, some people need ten hours. It doesn't matter, it's individual to yourself, but the point is maybe if you're lacking in energy that's the first place you can look how could you sleep a bit more effectively uh, and, and there's loads of stuff out there that you can do in order that that will be ha that will allow you to help uh, with this stuff okay the next one is diet okay eating drinking the right things earlier on we had the comment about coffee yeah coffee red bull things like this short term energy boosts they are short term okay isn't it quite amazing about two years ago I gave up caffeine completely don't have it yeah and um, but I didn't give up having a coffee uh, on my way to work from Starbucks in the morning I just had a decaf and I am still in the mentality two years later that somehow I feel better after I've had my coffee and I've got more energy there is no caffeine in that coffee okay there is nothing to give me the energy boost 
uh, there, maybe the water in it, okay? But that's about it. But the mentality is, oh, I'm much better when I've had a cup of coffee. There's no caffeine in it, okay? So think about things that are going to give you more slow release energy. Think about things that are going to give you energy that can release during the day. Good stuff that you can eat or drink, okay? Having a balanced diet, things like that, okay? Also with sleep, not, in, not eating too late at night and so on and so on and so on, okay? So those are two things that can give you energy. Um, what else can you think of? Quick question, we've only got 10 minutes left. Quick question in the chat box. What else gives us energy during the day? What else could we do that gives us energy or what gives us energy during the day? Any thoughts, anybody? What gives you energy? As well as sleeping and eating the right thing. Yeah? We've talked about coffee and stuff like that. Exercise, movement. Exercise is the next one. Absolutely. And when I say exercise, for those that are then now sitting there worried that they've got to do a five mile run at lunchtime, it doesn't need to be that. But it does need to be potentially a change of air quality. Um, and uh, physical movement, some kind of walk around the car park or if you're not in the office go for a little walk or if you are in an office block up and down the steps of the office block, whatever it may be. To make sure that that's turned off, there we go. Um, uh, so any kind of exercise, what exercise does is it releases endorphins into the system, endorphins eat away at your tired worn out chemical stuff and they give you some new great chemical that's going to give you more energy and so on and so on. Uh, the next comment was just out of Prem, uh, I think that's how you, I think that's short in your name, Pres uh, Pres Presmic? I think, sorry, I do apologise, um, an energetic person you work with. Absolutely, Shem, Shem, sorry, do you know what Shem, I knew that, apologies Shem. Um, I'll put people, people is the next one in there, working with those energy radiators, those players, yeah, those, even those spectators, those wannabe energy, energy radiators, that gives us energy as well, doesn't it, uh, to take away. Uh, uh, with people. Um, so, um, and then the final one is self-talk. What are you saying to yourself? Now we've done a whole section on self-talk, I mentioned it earlier, but if you got up this morning and the first thing you said was, oh I'm knackered, your brain will now lock on to knackered for the day. That will be its target, okay? That will be its target for the day and it will aim to help you be knackered for the day. Remember, your brain is the most powerful machine on the planet, but it will only do what you tell it to. Okay, so instead of saying you're knackered, and you don't have to be overly optimistic with this, you don't have to go, oh, I've got loads of energy, where actually you haven't, you feel knackered. Just be a bit more honest. Do you know what? I'm a little bit tired at the moment, but it's okay, because I'm gonna have a great day. Yeah, so give yourself a bit of a get out. Yeah? Now I've, I've, I've put um, uh, the uh, tear cycle in next just to go through because it's electrochemical. Your thinking generates your emotions. So if you think you're knackered, you're going to get knack knackered chemical coming out. If you want to have a good day and enjoy the day and feel good at the end of it, then you need to talk to yourself in a different way and put some triggers in. Um, hobbies and personal time. Yeah? Again, rhetorical question this one for you, but when's the last time you did something for you? When's the last time you made sure you, you had some you time? Yeah, we've got jobs, we've got families, we've got children, we've got clients, we've got all of these things. But when is your time? The time for you? Because that's your regeneration time at that point, okay? It puts you into a nice recovery zone of energy. Um, so what hobbies do you do? What time do you have for yourself? And I know that, look, I'm a father of three daughters, okay, and I run a business. So I know it can be very, very difficult. Um, but self-care has got to come first, because remember, put your own mask on first. If you want to help other people, if you want to be best possible dad, if you want to be best possible manager, best possible leader, best possible employee, the first place you've got to start is being best possible you. And that means giving yourself a little bit of downtime and so on and so on, okay? And then managing your which energy zone you're in, okay? So, people have seen this tier cycle before, thinking, emotions, actions, results. I've put it up simply because your self-talk releases the chemical. Your chemicals are what give you energy. Simple as that, okay? So if the input is crap, the energy's crap. 
Simple as that. If the input is good, you're going to get more energy. So if you didn't watch the um, uh, self-talk uh, seminar, then go to the YouTube page, watch the self-talk seminar, because uh, that bit is really important for the energy and the emotions that you release uh, during the day. Okay? This is called the energy zones. I have thrown this at once before. I know it's a very busy slide. I know there's lots of information on it, but just something to be aware of. We have four different energy zones, okay? We have high energy and low energy, and we have good energy and bad energy, okay? So, start with high good energy. It's called the performance zone, performance zone. It's when we feel confident, passionate, focused, challenged, yeah? Then we have good low energy. That's called recovery zone. That's why I was talking to you about having a bit of you time, okay? Relaxed, unfocused, mallow. Those times to calm you down, calm the brain and rest effectively. If you um, ever talk to an athlete, their rest days are as important as their training days, okay? So that's why that rest is really important. Then you've got bad energy. This is where you, bad high energy is when you're in survival zone. Anxious, fearful, defensive, frustrated, burnt out comes into the next one down. So now we go from survival zone into burnout. And I think it was Martin that mentioned burnout earlier on. Exhausted, defeated, hopeless, sad, fed up. That is there. So we don't want that bad negative energy. We want good energy. But good energy doesn't mean you have to be loud and shouty 100% of the time. No, 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 no. Some of that is calm, reflective, nice, calm energy, uh, unfocused, just to recharge those batteries. Yeah? So how many times did, per day do you recharge your batteries? How many times do you just go and go, do you know what, I'm just having five minutes. I'm going to sit down. Read five pages of a book, listen to a podcast, walk around a car park. All of that is this recovery zone. If you go at 100 miles an hour all day, you won't make it all day because you've got a finite amount of energy. So plan in a little bit. It doesn't need to be a long time. You haven't got to work an hour, half an hour off. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah? What I'm saying is every now and then, little break, little, little bit of a break. Okay? So. Being an energy drain, okay? So looking, now all the holes in the buckets, all those holes, an energy drain. The drain leaves you feeling diminished after you have been with them. You've started off a conversation bright and positive and you've come out of it dull, negative and frustrated. Or maybe unexpla unexpla <laughs> unexpla well, unexplainably cranky or irritable. That's the effect that those drains have on you. Yeah? You've gone into it all great and you come out going, oh great, okay, that was worth it, wasn't it, yeah? Don't let them get to you. In other words, don't let them walk through your mind with their dirty feet, okay? What is it that causes energy drain? In other words, these are problem-focused people, okay? What is it that causes energy drains? Let's have a look. Lack of sleep. Bad diet. No exercise. Can you see where I'm going with this? All the stuff that we said gives you energy, complete opposite of it will take your energy away, which is why it's something that we should constantly work on. People, letting people walk through your mind with their dirty feet uh, as well. Uh, no personal time. Uh, and not planning for your downtime. So earlier on in the last slide I said, when do you book it in? When do you put the time in? By not planning your recovery zone in, you will find it hard to be a radiator on a regular basis, okay? You'll find it hard to do that. If you're dealing with somebody else that is a drain, and you're their boss, maybe you need to have a word with them and tell them how their behavior is impacting other people. Because sometimes people can't see it. When you're miserable, you walk in a room, you walk out, leave everybody else miserable. Sometimes people can't always see that. Depends on their level of emotional intelligence, okay? We all feel up and down, but but do we all infect other people? It is a choice. Players, they feel down at times, they try and choose not to infect other people with it. Terrorists and corpses, terrorists do it on, a pur pur on purpose, corpses don't realise they're doing it a lot of the time. Okay? So, to finish off for you today, three quick tip, top tips to take away to ensure you can be an energy generator.
Okay, first one, top tip number one. Look after yourself first. Put your own mask on first, plan in your recovery zone time during the day, make sure your energy is high, look after yourself, do some exercise, have diet and so on and so on. Make a choice. It's about your mood. You can choose your mood. We know that because it's electrochemical, thinking, feeling, in that order. Okay? Change. Remember when you go through change, it's either fight or flight. Okay? The only other option that we've got is to change your own thinking. So if you're not happy about something at the moment, you can't change it, you won't exit from it. The only other way that we can do... Uh, no worries, Darren, I know you've got to go. We're slightly... We're nearly finished. Um, we've got to change our self-talk at that point. Okay? So choice number one, look after yourself. Uh, tip number one. Number two, increase your energy flow. Okay? Choose your diet, like I've said. Choose your exercise. Choose the people that you need to be around that are going to give you a buzz every day, okay? Talk to yourself in a helpful way. So I want you to think about how you can increase your energy flow each day and plan your recovery time in. Number three, to finish off, fill the holes in the bucket, okay? Choose what goes on in your head. Help people understand how their behaviour is affecting you if you are around those people. Help people understand they may not even know that they're being a drain. Okay? Their emotional intelligence might be lower. They may not even know. Help people understand that it's draining. Okay? And list out the things that drain the energy from you daily. List them out and then put a plan in to combat them at the other end. Because it, otherwise those drains are going to keep going. And you'll patch one or two up and then another one will start. So list out what drains your energy during the day. And then put a little bit of a plan together on how you can change those things in your life. Final point. On average, some people on this call will know this stat. You have 20, 29,000 days on this planet. In this country, 29,000 days, thanks Eddie, 29,000 days is the average amount of days that we get in this country on the planet. It's based on our, our average age of 80 and a bit. Don't work out what you have left at this point. The point is 29,000 days, and dare I say on the call collectively, some of them are gone, which means we've only got a few left. Do you want to spend the rest of them being a drain or a radiator? Completely up to you.